Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasham Ali Khan. This is the last and final video on the problems of capital gain. So far, in the last seven, eight, six, seven videos, I have completed 24 problems on capital gain. And in this video, the last five problems I'm going to explain. So after watching all these videos, hope you got a good command on this topic of capital gains. So comparatively, this topic, this head of income is simple compared to other heads like salary income or house poverty or business or profession. Very few provisions you have to remember for calculating capital gain. Some exemptions are given. So before starting the 25th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the points, then I'll explain. Now, see the problem number 25. On 1st July 1975, Mr. Jagannath purchased an agricultural land in Karnul for a price of Rs. 3,8,000. During the previous year, relevant to the current assessment year, he sold half of the property for 42 lakhs and immediately he purchased agricultural land for 9,30,000 in a village and a piece of land in Hyderabad city for Rs. 9 lakh. Calculate taxable income under the head capital gain if FMB on 1 for 2001 is 21 lakh. Actually, the SSC purchased a piece of agricultural land for 3 lakh 8,000. That 3 lakh 8,000 was the actual cost in 1975. If any asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, the SSC can choose higher of the following two actual cost or FMB. Here, FMB is given 21 lakh. So actually the complete property is not sold. Half of the property is sold for rupees 42 lakhs. So first of all, Mr. Jagannath consideration received 42 lakh. There is no selling expense. So net consideration 42 lakh. Less indexed cost of acquisition. Since the asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, so SSC can choose higher of the following two. Actual cost. The cost of the total agricultural land is 3 lakh 2000, 3 lakh 8000. But half of the land was sold. So half of 3 lakh 8000, 154. Fair market value of the complete land was 21 lakh. So half of 21 lakh, 10 lakh 50,000. So whichever is higher, 1 lakh 54,000 or 10 lakh 50,000. So 10 lakh 50,000 is higher, that is the cost of acquisition. Now we have to find out the indexed cost of acquisition. So 10,50,000 into current previous year index 317 divided by 100. Any asset purchased before 1 for 2001, the index number should be taken as 100. So 10,50,000 into 317 by 100, 33,28,500. This is the indexed cost of acquisition. Deduct will get capital gain 8,71,500. But Immediately after selling the agricultural land, he has purchased another agricultural land in the rural area. The agricultural land which he purchased in the rural area is 9,30,000. 9,30,000. According to section 54D, if an SSC sold one agricultural land and purchased another agricultural land, then exemption will be allowed under section 54D. So here same things, same cases there. And a piece of land in Hyderabad city, if the SSC purchased a urban land, no exemption will be given. Only agricultural land and that too in a village area, then only exemption will be allowed. So 9,30,000. So how much exemption will be given? Least of the following two capital gain amount or the cost of the new agricultural land. Cost of new agricultural land is 9,30,000 whereas capital gain is 8,71,500 whichever is less will be allowed. So 8,71,500 will be allowed as reduction under section 54B. 54B. So long term capital gain is nil. That's it. So amount spent to purchase agricultural land is allowed as exemption under section 54B, not D. 
sorry I told 54 D it was not 54 D it is 54 B 54 D is there for industrial building then 54 B up to 8 lakh 71 thousand and no deduction is allowed for purchase of urban land and these working notes you must write in examination that's all this is the problem number 25 now problem number 26 Mr. Narayan Reddy is owning a building since 1-5-1982 and using for industrial purpose. The cost of the building is 92,000. During the previous year, the state government acquired the building by passing an ordinance and paid 14,26,000 as compensation. So here, the government compulsorily acquired the building. So in many cases, the compulsory acquisition is there by the government. So whatever compensation received, that is also taxable. That is transfer of an asset. Now immediately he purchased an old building for industrial purpose 12 lakh and spent 80,000 on its renovation. Calculated income from capital gain. The new point in this problem is one building, industrial building was compulsorily taken over by the government. And with the proceeds, the SSC purchased another industrial building. So in this case, exemption is allowed under section 54D. Right? The first one, compensation received from the government is 14,26,000. No selling, transfer expenses, net consideration, indexed cost of acquisition. If an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose higher of the following to actual cost or FMV. But in our problem, fair market value is not given. So we take the actual cost. The cost of the building was 92,000 into 317 by 100. We'll get 291,640. Deduct capital gain 11,34,360. This is the capital gain. Now he has purchased another industrial building. So exemption will be allowed under section 54D. List of the following two. So actual capital gain, uh, actual capital gain or the cost of the new industrial building. The cost of the new industrial building is 12 lakh. 12 lakh is the cost of the new industrial building. But the capital gain is only 11 lakh 34,360. So 11 lakh 34,360 is allowed as deduction. So capital gain is there. In working note, you must write. The SSC has transferred industrial building and purchased another industrial building. So exemption under section 54D can be given to the list of the product. Cost of the new building is 12 lakh plus 80,000 rupees for innovation. The cost of the building is 12 lakh 80,000. Whereas capital gain amount is 11 lakh 34, 360. Whichever is lower will be allowed as exemption. So exemption under section 54D, 11, 34, 360. That's it. Now, 27th problem. During the previous year, Sri K. Giri Babu sold his building situated in Bangalore for 16,30,000. That means the consideration received is 16,30,000. See here. Now, the cost of which was 5 lakh 10 years ago, registration expenses incurred 40,000 and brokerage paid to purchase is 8,000. After selling the building within three months, he invested 4 lakh rupees in NABAD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. That is the NABAD, that is the full form of NABAD. And which has been notified as specified security under section 54 EC. Again, one more section is there, section 54 EC. In this section, Income Tax Act says, if a person invests, in any notified securities, then exemption will be allowed under section 54 EC. Compute the income from capital gain if selling expense are 80,000 and cost inflated index in the year of purchase was 137. Now, selling expense are 80,000. So 1630 minus 80, 1550 is the net consideration. Indexed cost of acquisition. At what price he purchased? 5 lakh rupees he purchased. So 5 lakh into 317 divided by 137, it is given in the problem. The index number in the year of purchase was 137. So 11 lakh 56, 934 deduct 393,066. That is the capital gain. Now exemption under section 54 EC. How much amount he has invested? 
4 lakh rupees he has invested. 4 lakh rupees he has invested. But exemption cannot be given for 4 lakh because the capital gain is 3 lakh 93,066. Whichever is lower, 4 lakh or 3 lakh 93,066, that will be allowed as exemption. So here, the SSC has transferred building and invested in notified security. So exemption can be given to the least of the following two. Actual amount invested or capital gain. That's it. This is the end of 27th problem. 28th. Sri Babu Chari sold his house on 25th March 2022 for 28 lakh. Selling expenses 10,000. So consideration received 28 lakh. Selling expense 10,000. So 2790 is the net consideration. Now, the house has been purchased in the year 1998-99 for 2 lakh. And the FMB on 1-4-2001 is 2 lakh 50,000. So whichever is higher. Actual cost or FMB? FMB is higher 2 lakh 50. So we can take 2 lakh 50,000 into 317 by 100. Then capital gain 19 lakh 97,500. Now, he has invested 5 lakh rupees in bonds of NHAI and a new house has been purchased for 14 lakh. He has sold one residential house and purchased another residential house. So exemption under section 54 will be allowed. So exemption under section 54, 14 lakh. This is the cost of the new residential house. Then apart from that, he has invested 5 lakh rupees bonds of NHAI. These are the specified security for uh, under section 54 EC. So he will get the exemption under section 54 EC. So here 54 EC 5 lakh. So after deducting 5 lakh, long term capital gain will be 97,500. That's it. Now last and final problem 29th. Sri Ramakrishna sold his gold ornament for 8 lakh during the previous year. The cost of which 1 lakh 20,000 16 years ago. After selling the ornaments within 2 months, he invested in bonds 7 lakh of unit Tessil Chemicals and Hydro Power Limited Mumbai, which are notified as specified security under section 54 EC. Compute the income from capital gain if selling expense are 1.5% and cost inflated index in the year of purchase was 100. So what is the sale consideration? 8 lakh rupees. The gold, what he sold is gold ornaments. He has sold the gold ornaments for 8 lakh and the selling expense is 1.5%. 1.5% of 8 lakh, 12,000. Deduct. 7 lakh 88,000 is the net consideration. Now indexed cost of acquisition. He has purchased the ornament, ornament 16 years ago and the cost was 1 lakh 20,000. So 1 lakh 20,000 into 317 by 100. It is given in the last line. The index number of the purchase year is 100. So 3 lakh 8400 capital gain we got. Now he has invested the amount 7 lakh rupees he has invested in unit tessil chemical and hydropower which are notified under section 54 EC. But 54 EC deduction will be given only if the SSC sold a residential house and invested in this uh, notified security. But here in our problem, the SSC sold gold ornaments and he has invested in specified security. Exemption will not be given. Previous problem, building was sold and invested in securities allowed. Here gold ornaments are sold and investment are made in 54 EC. No exemption will be allowed under section 54 EC. So long term capital gain is 4,7600. In working note you should write out. Exemption under section 54 EC is nil. Any land or building or both are transferred. Then only exemption under section 50, 54 EC is allowed. The SSC has transferred gold ornaments and purchased bonds. So exemption cannot be given. That's it. So totally 8, 29 problems I have explained on computing the income from capital gain. So if you have watched all the videos with full concentration and prepared the notes of all the provision, definitely you can face the examination boldly. You will get a lot of interest in this subject of income tax. Provided you should watch all the videos from beginning till end. Don't come and join. 
normally students will watch the videos just one day before examination you cannot be able to remember so it will take a lot of patience and a lot of hard work to get a command on this subject of income tax hope you are getting my point so inshallah we will continue our discussion in the next video so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel among your friends among your group so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give your comments subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which are given below my video inshallah we will continue our discussion in the next video